Professor, thanks for joining us. F first off, the first question, the, the, the most obvious one, what is osteoporosis? Well, osteoporosis is the commonest bone disease worldwide. Mm -hmm. And the problem with osteoporosis is that it makes you much more higher risk of getting fractures. Mm -hmm. And it's the fractures that occur as a result of having either osteoporosis or the early stages of it, which are called osteopenia, that cause multiple fractures mm -hmm. if they're not treated. Now, it, it, it's known by a variety of names, yep. one, one of which is, well, obviously brittle bone, but, but often people call it the silent disease or the silent condition. Why? Why is that? It's called the silent disease because there are no symptoms or signs until you actually fracture. Mm -hmm. And usually the commonest sign is you trip and fall, you fracture your wrist, or you can suddenly lose height, or you get severe back pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is why you don't know you have it unless you have a specific test, which is called a DEXA, and that can identify people at risk. And what we're trying to do is that if there are families with a history of osteoporosis, particularly if they've had uh, fractures of the hip or they're on certain medications which are known to cause osteoporosis, that they should be scanned. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if, if you have an image of osteoporosis, it, rightly or wrongly, it could be uh, a condition that attacks older women. Is that, that is the general myth, but that mm -hmm. is totally wrong. It affects all age groups. And nowadays, the much younger people are getting it because the risk factors, which were applied mainly to the older people, are now occurring in the young. There are people with diabetes, no lack of exercise, a lot of stress, particularly nowadays you've got groups who exercise too much without taking adequate calories or they do too little. And stress, both psychological and excessive physical stress, that can cause it. And it was because the athletes got osteoporosis that I got into this in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it's important to identify because if you're overstressed, this affects your hormones. And you need normal hormones, estrogen in women, testosterone in men, to form vitamin D. If you have no vitamin D, you don't absorb um, calcium. And as a result of that, there are four small little glands in the back of the thyroid which is in the neck and they become overactive and they take the calcium from the bones to build it up so you have to know what the cause of the osteoporosis is to treat it you just can't put somebody on medication of course you you, you mentioned stress yeah. and given the fact that we are in in the grip of the most austere uh, world that we've ever known i would imagine that you are seeing more and more people with this i am seeing one in four now that Five years ago, it was one in 20 men. Now it's down to one in four. Mm -hmm. will get a, a, an osteoporotic fracture, fracture in their lifetime. Now, once you've had one, if you're not treated, you're guaranteed another one within six months to a year. It's what they call the domino effect, mm -hmm. particularly in the spine. Mm -hmm. And because some people still think it's an old woman's disease, men do very badly, and the morbidity and mortality is much higher in men and we've just we're in the process of bringing out a, a booklet mm -hmm. on male osteoporosis and we have um, a 27 year old uh, with vertebral fractures. Mm -hmm. How is it treated? It's treated, well the first uh, is to identify the cause. Probably the commonest cause is genetics but a lot of it is due to inadequate calcium and vitamin D if you've got low levels of vitamin D, you have to know why. Is it because you haven't um, not taken enough vitamin D? Or if you're taking it, you've got some problems with your digestive system so that you're not absorbing it? And a, a lot of other factors um, that can affect it. Mm. If your hormones, mm -hmm. um, if you're on steroids for any condition, whether it's for asthma, for skin, for a whole variety of conditions, this will cause bone loss. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, because uh, the treatment for cancer of the breast and prostate have improved so much, they're now putting people on what they call aromatase inhibitors. These are um, drugs that reduce the amount of estrogen in women and the amount of testosterone in men, and that causes bone loss to occur. 
But the important thing for people to realize is that the bone loss occurs in the first six months, which it also does if you're put on steroids. So that if you're going to put patients on these medications, you should know whether they're at risk. Bones need normal sex hormones. They need weight-bearing exercise, running on the spot, stairs, dancing, depending on the age group. You want adequate amounts of calcium and vitamin D, but you also need adequate nutrition. And with the increase in eating disorders, both men and women, and the other extreme, the gross obesity that's occurring, all of these impact. So you've got to find the cause, mm -hmm. treat the cause, and then, you, depending on what the person's problem is, obviously if they've got, they can't absorb, you can't give them something of like course. that. Yeah. So you also have to know what levels of vitamin D are. And if the vitamin D is low, this causes, as I said, the parathyroid to go up. So if, you've got, if they've got a high parathyroid, you've got to check and find out, because sometimes, for no reason, mm -hmm. the parathyroids can become overactive. Mm -hmm. And if you don't remove the one, there are four of them, which one is actually overactive, you don't surgically remove it, the person won't get any better. And it comes in uh, phases. I've just had three, what we call primary hyperparathyroidism, in the last week. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't do the tests to find out what the cause is, if you don't treat that, the patient, if you put them on medication, mm -hmm. they won't take it. Of course. you. You mentioned that you're seeing more and more people. Uh, with, with this as a backdrop, I would imagine that the work of the Osteoporosis Society would be vital at this point. Oh, it's essential because it's the only group, that, it's the only society that actually deals with this. And the, there are only two people in the, that actually work for the society. And they run the helpline, they produce the leaflets, and they're the ones that the health, line, the health line, they can be on the phone for half an hour to an hour because lots of people still think that osteoporosis is a death warrant. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's preventable and it's treatable. Mm -hmm. But you have to 